Welcome to iLecture Online. Now this is a very interesting problem. What we're going to do is we're going to try to find a function for the pressure of air as a function of height. So let's say that this here is the ground and up there is space and as you can tell as you go higher and higher up the mountain the air pressure becomes less and less and less. So of course if we have a small strip in the air up some, at some elevation, let's say that the the positive y direction is upward, the pressure at the ground is equal to pressure sub naught, and so when we go from one location in space to another location in space, if this is a small change in height or a small change in elevation, the pressure will change as well from point one to point, or from pressure one to pressure two. So how do we come up with an equation to describe the air pressure as a function of height? Height in this case would be y. Well, we're going to need three equations. The first equation we need is the PV equals NRT equation. And to make things simple, we'll go ahead and let N equals 1. N is, of course, the number of moles, so we're going to let N equals 1. So then the equation becomes PV equals R times T. The second equation that we need is the density equation. The density by definition is equal to, let's see, mass over volume. All right? And the third equation that we need is an equation for the pressure. We know that the pressure in the liquid is equal to rho g times y. All right, so what are we going to do here? Well, first of all, let's take a look at our, our um, equation at the end there. Pressure equals rho g y. Let's find how the pressure changes as a function of y, and of course that will depend upon the change in the density or, that, or the density at that particular location. So we can write that dp is equal, the change in the pressure is equal to a negative because as y becomes greater, pressure becomes lower, a negative rho g times dy. So over a small little distance dy in the, in the space or in, in the atmosphere, we're going to have a small amount of change in the pressure, and that's going to be the equation here. The second equation we need is this right here, but before we can work with that, let's go over here. Let's find what volume is equal to. We can say that the volume is equal to R times T over P, and of course that's the gas constant, that's the temperature, and this is the pressure right here, so that goes in here. So we can say that the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, and the volume is R times T over P, so that makes P go up here, which means that this can now go in our equation over here for, um, for density. Wow, I, was I just lost my variable. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. I want to take that from our density equation and plug it into our equation there. If we do that, we get dp is equal to minus the density. The density is going to be equal to the mass times the pressure divided by R times T and that times G times dy. So now we have what we would call a differential equation relating the change in the pressure to change, change in height and we've eliminated the density because we used the, the gas, the, the um, ideal gas equation and the equation for density to get rid of density and now we've written in terms of pressure. So now we can separate the variables. Now we can write that dp over p is equal to the negative mg over r times t times dy. Now notice that this quantity right here is simply a constant m is a constant, g is a constant, r is a constant, t is a constant at a particular location in the atmosphere. So now I think we're ready to integrate both sides. So I'm going to integrate the left side, and I'm going to integrate from P1 to P2. Of course, that's from one location in the sky to another location. Now we can go ahead and make that bigger if you like. It doesn't matter. So from P1 to P2, and uh, we have dP over P. And that is equal to the integral, or minus mg over rt times the integral of dy from y1 to y2. All right, so for any distance from point 0.1 to point 0.2, from y1 to y2, we integrate the right side, and that will give us a pressure 1 to pressure 2. So when we integrate, the dp over p is going to be the natural log of p, evaluated from p1 to p2, and that's going to be equal to minus mg over rt, 
times y evaluated from y1 to y2. Now we plug in the limits, we get the natural log of p2 minus the natural log of p1, so the natural log of p2 minus the natural log of p1, which is equal to uh, minus mg over rt times y2 minus y1. And of course this can be simplified to be the natural log of p2 over p1, which is equal to uh, minus mg over rt times y2 minus y1. Uh, yeah. Okay, now, I can do it now or I can do it later. Uh, let's do it now. Let's say that we take our limit equation, so let's come up here, and let's say if y1 is equal to zero, then p1 equals to p sub naught. So that's what we have over here. We know that on the ground, p is equal to p sub naught. So y, if y1 is equal to y at the ground, which is 0, then we can make that replacement. So then we can write the equation as the natural log of p2 over p sub naught is equal to minus mg over rt times y2 only because y1 is not going to be equal to zero. Now we can go ahead and simplify this by taking the analog of both sides. So we can say that e to the natural log of p2 over p0 is equal to e to the minus mg over rt times y. So let y2 equals any y, any y above zero. So then here, this of course negates, we get p sub 2 over p sub naught, and of course, that means that p sub 2 is going to be equal to p as a function of height, so this is equal to p as a function of y, so let's go ahead and write it like that. So this is equal to e to the minus mg over rt times y, and finally we can say that p as a function of y, which is what we're looking for, is p sub naught the pressure on the ground, times e to the minus k times y, where k is equal to mg over rt, to simplify things. And so this is our equation of the air pressure above ground, starting with the initial pressure on the ground, times e to the minus ky, where k is mg over rt, r is the gas constant, t is the temperature, m is the mass, and g is acceleration due to gravity. Now, you say, well, what mass are we talking about? Well, remember what we said, that let n equals 1, and n is the number of moles. So that means that m is equal to the mass of 1 mole of air, which is about equal to 29 grams, because Air is roughly 75% nitrogen, 25% oxygen, of course, not quite that ratio, but it's about that. So that means uh, nitrogen is about 28 grams per mole, oxygen about 32 grams per mole, so eh, about 29, I think it's like 29.1 or so grams per mole. If we plug that in here, we have G, we have R, the gas constant, and the temperature, that will be the constant that goes in here, Y is the height, and that will give us the pressure, once of course we know the pressure atmospheric pressure, which is about 101,000 pascals, or 101,000 newtons per square meter. And that's how we find the pressure of the atmosphere.